Thank you so much, Sharon, for leading the discussion. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Mayor Bliss. We are going to wrap up this portion of the program with a conversation about creating pathways to service. Uh, we have California's Chief Service Officer, Josh Friday, member of the Governor's Cabinet in California, uh, leading service, volunteer, and civic engagement efforts across the state, and of course, a New Deal leader when he was the mayor of his hometown in California. We also have Luke Bronin, the current mayor of Hartford, Connecticut, joining us. He took office in 2016, previously a Deputy Assistant Secretary at the Department of Treasury during the Obama administration, and came on and led his city through its greatest fiscal crisis in its history. So uh, we'll let them take it from here. Thank you, guys. Fantastic. Thank you. All right, all right. Today in this uh, afternoon, we get to talk about something that we are very, very passionate about, which is why we're here. And I know many of you are passionate about as well, which is the idea of service and national service. And it's not a new idea. This is an idea summit, but service is certainly not a new idea. Uh, the idea of calling on Americans to serve and step up and serve. Uh, but what may be new is the role that states and cities are playing in the national service movement. So we're very excited about having this opportunity today. I get to be here uh, with a good friend, Mayor Bronin. Uh, we have a lot in common in addition to loving New Deal. Uh, we both uh, are, he's, he is a mayor. I had a chance to serve as a mayor. Uh, we are both veterans of uh, perhaps the, the greatest branch, the United States Navy, go Navy. Uh, and we both are passionate about service. So today we get to talk about the role that, that the American Rescue Plan has played in really catalyzing the, the we heard of earlier, innovative pilots uh, around this idea of how do we call on people to serve? Uh, and you, uh, Mayor Bronin, had a chance to uh, create a, a really exciting program in your city uh, called the Youth Service Corps. We'll talk about, it's similar to what we've done in California, uh, but maybe start us off by talking about why you created the Youth Service Corps uh, and what are you seeing from it? Sure. Thanks, Josh. First of all, it's great to be here. Uh, I want to say huge thanks to the New Deal for everything, including bringing us all together and giving Josh and I the chance to talk about something that we're both passionate about. Um, so when I took office in 2016, one of our first goals was to create our Hartford Youth Service Corps. And we built it because we saw a major gap in our youth development efforts, uh, which was that we didn't have anything that was providing paid year-round work opportunity to young people who had fallen off track. And I want to talk about sort of each, each piece of that real quick. First, we wanted something that could reach those young people who really had fallen off track, you know, opportunity youth. It's 16 to 24. Uh, the overwhelming majority of young people in our youth service corps uh, have been DCF involved, uh, justice involved, experienced uh, profound housing insecurity, uh, and in many cases had dropped out of school. Uh, it was not a first come, first serve. It was by referral only from those organizations uh, or individuals in the community who said, this is a young person who needs some help getting back on track. Uh, but extraordinary young people who've got incredible talent and, and capability. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we had both a carrot to get them engaged in this by paying uh, minimum wage, but that's meaningful for a lot of these young people, in most cases earning their first paycheck year-round, not a few weeks during the summer, but all the way uh, around the year, get that experience of earning the paycheck and, and feeling what that feels like, but at the same time doing work that actually makes a difference in the community and feeling like you are making a contribution to this community that so many Young people, unfortunately, felt disconnected from and feel disconnected from. Uh, and at the same time, doing all of that while getting connected to incredible uh, network of mentors and coaches who are helping those young people get ready for what's next, make a plan, whether that's going back to high school or getting a GED, whether it's going on to some type of post-secondary school, uh, or whether it's uh, going on to get a job. And, you know, we, we've had great results there, but that's, that's why we built it. So you could have, uh, you know, reach the kids who weren't being reached, give them the experience of a paycheck, connect them to mentors, and make them feel like they were really making a difference in their community. That's awesome. I, uh, first of all, round of applause for creating the Youth Service Corps in Hartford. So there's, there's two concepts that I loved you, that you touched upon that I think it's worth diving deeper into. One is you started off by making it clear that this is a paid service opportunity. I find this in California, I, even though I have the chance to have, be in a cabinet level position with the governor and I run an organization called California Volunteers. So whenever anyone thinks about service, they think about volunteers. And I have to remind people that, that even though I volunteered to be in the military, I got paid 
uh, and it's, it should be paid, that we should be investing in this, uh, in this work. And so that was the, the, the advantage of the American Rescue Plan, at least in California, is we, we knew we wanted to create service programs like, like you created in Hartford, uh, and we knew we wanted to give more Californians the opportunity to serve. What the American Rescue Plan allowed us to do is to supercharge and build two special programs in California. One, uh, like the Youth Service Court, we call it in California the Youth Jobs Court. It's $185 million that our governor and our legislature invested in creating the Youth Jobs Court, which is to provide opportunities like Mayor Bronin uh, um, uh, created for young people that are low income, foster care, uh, that have been involved, justice involved, uh, that otherwise have a hard time getting into the workforce, giving them an opportunity to serve. Uh, to do something meaningful. And so we have them, and we've partnered in what's so exciting, I think, about this program, which is relevant uh, to this community and to why we are so excited about and having this conversation with you all, is we partnered with our biggest cities in California and several counties to fund them to create this program. So this was very much a partnership between the state and local municipalities to create literally thousands of service positions. And these are positions where young people are working in food banks, they're tutoring and mentoring, they're taking climate action, doing a variety of environmental work. They're doing really meaningful work. And, this, and, and the second program is we created a, a, a program called the Californians for All College Corps. And, and here's, here's the gist of this. We call this the California GI Bill. And, it's, it's the, and here's the new deal that we create in California. If you're willing to serve while you're in school in California, then we're willing to give you $10,000 towards your education, which for a Pell Grant student is the amount that they, the gap that they have to come up with by either taking out loans, which is why we have a student debt crisis in this country, or by working. And so I had to, when I was in college, I was a Pell Grant recipient, had to work in at a local golf course, uh, washing golf carts. Now we have literally thousands of Californian students who are able to serve in their community, building social networks and social capital while we help them pay for college. And the, the new deal is, is that, it, and it's, 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 again, it's not a new idea. We have the GI Bill, but in California, because of the American Rescue Plan, where we've invested $127 million into the College Corps program, you, we are now providing debt-free pathways for our young people that's tied to service. And, the, the, and maybe this is, I want to pass it back to you, Mayor Bronin. One of the things that we've heard from both of these programs, besides the economic value that's being provided, is a concept that you brought up, which is this idea of connection. Uh, that for the that we we're, when I, I talk to young people who say for the first time ever they feel connected to their communities, and I'm curious what what you are seeing in you know wh where do you see that connection take place, and what do you see the benefits of it? I think that's a hugely important point, and I think it's been important for a long time. We've had so many people of all ages in our communities who are disconnected, uh, our young people especially, and of course the pandemic uh, made that terribly worse. And so that work, which was important before, I think is now vital to helping young people recover and heal and reconnect after everything they've been through. And, and we're seeing the same thing, that the young people who are part of this, who are part of a team doing that work, who are doing work that matters, and realizing that they can actually see a change in their lives as a result of that creates that sense of connection. And we try to measure it in, in you know, to the last conversation, we try to measure it too. And so of those kids who came into the Youth Service Corps uh, out of school without a diploma or a GED, 84% uh, of them went back to school or went back to get that GED. Of those who came into the Youth Service Corps who had a GED or a diploma but they weren't working uh, and they weren't in school, you know, post-secondary, um, close to 70% uh, went on to another uh, degree or certification program, and also about 70%, 72% went on to unsubsidized employment afterwards. Um, so it made a huge difference, but talking to the young people who are in this program, it, it absolutely helped create that sense of connection. And, um, and just to talk about you know, the impact that can have, we're obviously working at vastly different scales, statewide in California and in uh, you know, the city of Hartford in Connecticut. But in Hartford, over the last seven years, um, thousands of kids have now been part of this Youth Service Corps. It now represents about one and a half percent of our city's population that has been part of the Youth Service Corps. And you think about what that means, uh, you know, for a community as a whole, it's, it's real. Yeah, it's and, real. And I, one of the things that, that we've seen in California uh, is, and, and the, I think it's the power of investing in these kinds of programs is, Beyond the economic opportunity, like you say, we just saw a couple weeks ago, I don't know, if, does anyone see what the Surgeon General 
uh, just declared, literally declared a national health crisis around loneliness. That he called that one of the biggest health crises we have in our country. We're all seeing it in, in our communities. We're seeing the mental health crisis. Uh, we're, seeing, um, we're seeing young people with a, with a lack of hope uh, and purpose. And, and the, the power, I think, of these service programs is that it's not just about a job. It's about a job of dignity. It's about a job of meaning. It's about a job of purpose. Uh, and so when we invest in them, at least what we're seeing in California, is it is providing that sense of hope. I was with a young person uh, in Richmond, California, uh, about a month ago, who was identified uh, by the city as being most likely to either be killed or to kill somebody else, gang-related. And I got to visit him when he was doing a project through our Youth Jobs Corps program where he was remodeling a home, a, a World War II uh, home, uh, that was going to become the low-income housing for a family in Richmond. And what he said to me was, what was so powerful for him, what he was so grateful for, was he never believed, ever, that he would be able to do something positive for his community. He never believed that he was going to be able to contribute uh, in a meaningful way. And this program gave him that opportunity. And we're seeing that across the state uh, at scale. So I just, I want to, um, I want to ask, because I think it's so important that we, we connect these, this idea of national service that many of us are passionate about to what it actually means down the ground. Why do you think it's so important for mayors, especially, uh, to be doing this work around creating service opportunities? Well, I think there's a whole, whole bunch of reasons, but one, um, to do this work right, uh, first of all, you got to do it with the right partners. Uh, you got to make sure that you're working with folks who are able to uh, reach young people, to, to establish relationships of trust, uh, to recruit people who are both talented and, and passionate about the work. And I think at the local level, that work can, can often be most effective um, because you just you know the community best. Um, pre, pre ARPA, it was also the case that we didn't have uh, resources coming down, either from the feds or, or from the state to do it. And so if we were going to build it and make, see it in our community, we had to do it ourselves. And we did it at a time. We were in the midst of a, uh, as, as you uh, was mentioned before, a, a historic fiscal crisis in the city when I came in. And so we raised all the funds for this privately at first. It was corporations, it was foundations. Um, but we then seized the opportunity of the ARPA dollars to expand it and grow it. And that was important not just so that we could increase the numbers of kids in the Youth Service Corps, but also because we wanted to demonstrate that we had skin in the game, that we were committed to it and invested in it. And we hoped that we would start to get the, the camel's nose under the tent to try to get some sustained public support because at the end of the day, to do this at scale requires that same level of funding. And I know you've done something very similar with you know, ARPA dollars and other things in, in California. And I think are trying to do the same thing. We'd love your thoughts on you know, why, why use ARPA and what's the plan for moving beyond ARPA and making it sustainable. Yeah, I mean, the, the truth is the American Rescue Plan, I think, allowed us to create programs that change the imagination of what's possible, uh, of what's possible around service. And so, for, so now, uh, between the Youth Jobs Corps program we've talked about and the, uh, the College Corps program, we also created the Countries for a Statewide Climate Corps, which now other states are starting to create their own climate corps, which is really exciting. Uh, the governor loves to, to, loves to point this out, but if you add up all the, all the programs in, in California now that ARPA made possible, uh, in California, we are actually larger than our country's marquee service program, the Peace Corps. Uh, and that's what was possible because of ARPA. And now the governor's proposed to make those, those funding sources ongoing, paid for out of the state general fund. Because people have seen what's possible when you invest in these kinds of programs. And they've seen the impact all across the board. Uh, and it's, it's very exciting. I think we wanted to see um, if we had a question time for maybe one or two questions, but just really quickly before you, any advice for a mayor uh, or a state legislator or a local official who wants to create a service program? Uh, the only advice would be that I think that there are people who see the power of this. And, you know, if you don't have the resources or if you've used your ARPA, and you, but you still want to build it, I think there's an enormous amount of, of latent support out there in the private sector and in foundations to do this kind of work. That's right. One question in the back. Hello, Dorsey Pleers, uh, Chief City Auditor in the City of Albany. This is um, upstate New York. Question about the program. Um, minimum, minimum wage, but do you also include any type of benefits outside of just salary? 
And then the other question, and I may have missed this, are the service opportunities specifically within government or through your private public partnerships, the youth or whomever is uh, incorporated into these programs can work outside of uh, state city government? Sure, so uh, really quickly, so we've structured our program to allow flexibility. So minimum wage, which um, a little over $15 in California, up to we have some cities who are paying $27 an hour through our program. We also allow up to 50% of the money that we provide to do exactly, to provide the wraparound resources that you talked about. Because the goal is to really launch a career for a young person, which we know whether that's housing or transportation or daycare, we have to provide those wraparound services. So that is built into our program. And then the work, which is I think why the local partnerships are so critical, the work actually largely gets done with nonprofit partners and community-based organizations in the community. So uh, you, you, we provide a lot of flexibility, no for-profits, but we have a lot of our members serve either with the city or with the county directly. And then we have, um, most of them serve with community-based organizations doing meaningful work. And I'll just say one of the benefits we've seen that we didn't honestly expect, but we're seeing it and it's exciting, is that a lot of our service members are ended, ending up filling the gap that our cities are seeing in their workforce. So we're seeing a direct pipeline between serving to then working in the city or the county uh, that they're being employed, which is, of course, exciting. It's a win-win for everybody. And so the answer in Hartford is very similar to the answer in California. We, uh, although for the most part, um, compensation is entirely in wages. I wish we could offer benefits, but we, we, we can't. We try to maximize the number of kids who can be in the program uh, earning that paycheck. But because they've got that incredible support system, they're, we're also trying to make sure that they're connected to the resources that are out there, right? Whether it is, uh, you know, our Husky, you know, me, uh, Medicaid program or, or other um, resources that, uh, whether it's housing, transportation, anything, making sure that we're taking that opportunity. Any final words, Mayor, for anyone uh, excited about uh, creating national service in their city or state? Oh, I mean, do we have one oh, more question? Okay. Well, maybe one more question and then we'll get to final words. Uh, my name is Jazz Lewis, delegate uh, from Maryland. Thank you guys so much. We are starting down this service year in Maryland with our governor, Wes Moore, which we're really excited about. Uh, I promise you that Results for America did not ask me to do this, but I did have a question on how you guys are measuring impact. Like, it's great that, you know, a lot of these young folks are gaining experience with service. I started my career as a community organizer. I strongly believe in that. Um, but are you, is there any type of connection to measuring for impact to just make sure these young folks aren't spinning their wheels in organizations that aren't actually having an impact in those communities? So, I mean, I, I cited those stats before, but those are really the core measures of success for us. We want young people coming into this Youth Service Corps to come out either back in school, going on to more school, or in a job, or both. And that's our, those are our core measures. Um, but a big part of that is making sure that as they're going through this year of work, they're making a plan for what comes next. You know, that's, that is one of the responsibilities of any core member, and it's one of the responsibilities of the coaches, is to make sure that there is a plan that that kid is putting in place saying, this is the next step I want to take. And, um, and we found that that's, you know, made a, made a huge difference. So for us, to your question, um, on our College Corps program, we actually built in using ARPA dollars uh, evaluation from an organization called WestEd to, to actually study whether we are graduating students with less debt, uh, whether they are having a good experience, what the impact they're having in their community. But also, we, with these, all of these programs, we're creating not just the, the future workforce for our state, we're creating the future leaders of our state. So are we actually training our young people to be ready to work, to be ready to go in the world? Those are the kinds of things we are studying. For our, for our Jobs Corps program, um, like in Hartford, we are, we are tracking whether we're actually creating a pipeline to a new career. Uh, and we just, someone just joined our team, a, a familiar face at New Deal, David Silver, who's in the back, uh, who will be around, uh, who's, who, we, who has come on just to think about how do we take the thousands now of service members in California and ensure that they have a pipeline and a bridge to a job. And we're going to be tracking that and making sure that we're, we're successful in that. And just in, in closing comments, and then I'll let the, the great uh, mayor of Hartford uh, close us out. Um, I would just want to say, one, it's, it's, a great, it's an honor to be here, to be among friends. But uh, our feeling is, and we want to be helpful in this from California, every state should have a college core program. That's how we should be dealing with the student debt crisis. We know the politics are great. We know that this is, a, this is an American idea that resonates. And we can deal with the student debt crisis by tying it to service. 
every city and state should have a youth service uh, core uh, like they do in Hartford, and every state should have a climate core. So if, if we can be helpful in talking to you about how to do that, how to build it, uh, how to get started uh, with, uh, at a small level and then scale it from there, we would love to be in partnership with you all in creating this movement. I would just echo that, and also on the last one, I should mention, we were talking just before we got up here about what, what you guys are trying to do in Maryland, uh, which, is, which is awesome. Um, I'll finish on one, one plug, uh, mostly in case any of the team is watching, and then, and then to echo Josh. Um, we were really excited this year. The National Youth Employment Coalition uh, recognized the Hartford Youth Service Corps as the innovative program nationally in youth employment. And uh, we were excited about that, one, because it helps us make the case for more resources to grow it, and two, because we want to see it replicated. We want to see it replicated in other cities in Connecticut, and we want to see it replicated around the country. And so, just like Josh, you know, my team and I are willing to talk with anybody, anytime about how to do it, and also, uh, uh, eager to learn how we can do it better because that's a huge part of doing this work is constantly looking in the mirror and saying what are we not getting right yet and how do we do it better grateful to you all looking forward to the uh, party and uh, fun for the rest of the week thank you thanks everybody